வணக்கம் from the beautiful city of Tiruchirappalli We are here today in Virudhunagar Vanakkam and hello to where land ends to the beautiful beautiful Kanyakumari traveling through the valleys through the hills the seas of this beautiful state the election express is coming to a close but we're hitting the road one last time and fittingly we touch down in chennai so for anyone who's in chennai you know the best way to travel is through an auto a high stakes battle in the three seats of chennai so for one last time in tamil nadu let's get the show on the road hello and vanakkam from singar chennai our last stop of the election express what a journey it's been and we've decided to come here to chennai over the next two days talk about what chennai it's want in chennai north chennai central and chennai south we've seen a whole lot of political bickering in chennai but no one really talking about the civic issues for example where i'm standing looks absolutely stunning but the smell is anything but singara thanks to the decades old kuvam problem so we're going to over the next half an hour here on the election express get you details of what each candidate has to offer you the voter so you can go ahead with an informed opinion and vote on 19th april the beach the railway station the temples these are the familiar sights and sounds of chennai but so are these the familiar smell of the polluted kuam the dreadful monsoon mess the palikarnai marshland turned dumpyard add to it now is a traffic mess cut see the metro construction chennai civic wars is what this election is all about so that's what we'll be focusing on let's begin with chennai south this constituency has an interesting mix of segments Tinagar, Mailapur, Sholinganallur, Velicheri, Saidapet and Virgambakkam. Chennai South has been ravaged of late by some of the worst floods. Every time it's rained, the situation has been grave for residents of this area. As someone who's lived in Sholinganallur for years and covered these floods too, I've seen firsthand how residents suffer due to a lack of planning. The amount of water that's been released from that lake has also increased and from many other reservoirs because they're all running at near full capacity now. So with the agenda being clear for the candidates, let's speak to each of them on how they plan on addressing this issue. We first meet the AIADMK candidate Dr. Jayawardhan while he campaigns in the lanes of Tinagar. Jayawardhan was MP of Chennai South but lost out to the DMK. in 2019 how's the campaign going sir uh, you can very well see the the, the joyous atmosphere here because the admk is definitely going to win uh, so party cadres are with much enthusiasm people are uh, happy that they are going to elect an admk mp uh you won before from this seat what went wrong after that in 2019 what do you think had to be changed for this time uh 2019 the major reason why we had lost that election is because we were in an alliance with bjp the people sentiment was anti bjp so that was the reason another reason was that uh dmk had continuously made false propaganda with people they had made false promises with people for example uh, loans will be waived off for students neet will be abolished and uh, the farmers loan will be waived off this reflected in the entire tamil nadu so uh, 1 plus 1 added to 2 these two factors were the main reason why admk lost in 2019 election each an individual mp i for example 2014 to 19 whatever performance i had done it didn't really matter and the entire uh, narrative was in a different direction interesting um who do you consider as your biggest competitor right now is it the dmk or is it the bjp is it tamil nadu sandar rajan or is it tamil nadu chitanga pandey um it's always in tamil nadu that uh, admk versus dmk 
that is uh, as our leader purachi talavera had said it is good force admk versus bad force dmk uh, national parties don't have a role don't have a grassroots level connect with uh, with the with you know the people as such so whether it's congress whether it's bjp they don't really have a connect with the people people are not talking about them when people themselves are not talking only media is talking about them so it doesn't really reflect at the ground level and doesn't really impact the elections so it's always admk versus dmk here and definitely this time admk will win because of the anti uh, people stance by the dmk government price rise has increased people are unable to run their family at the end of the month their savings is all being robbed eb eb price has been hiked so uh, you know the milk prices have been hiked people are angry at this present dmk government so definitely definitely that will reflect the current mp tamilachi thanga pandian um how would you see her performance really i have been continuously addressing uh, in social media way before one and a half months before i created an hashtag timuka naralman donor nam tension e thugidikum makkalukum seitha drogangal it means what what she didn't do for the constituency how uh, she betrayed the people of uh, south chennai asset i recorded around our 12 to 14 videos on key issues pallikane marshland cmrl mrts where her role in all of these things was Uh, uh she didn't do anything for the constituency with regard to these matter infrastructure facility i'll tell you one example mrts uh, the valley to st thomas mount that uh, rail line um, uh, land acquisition problem 2009 7900 it was pending um, because of it was in the high court so i was during my tenure i finished off the entire land acquisition problem and then the project was supposed to be started but dmk mp didn't do anything in this regard Uh, what had happened is that 18 months the project should have completed but it it's been 5 years she didn't complete the project cmrl for entire traffic management in south chennai especially omr road if you step into omr road yeah you 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 can't come out of it after one hour. you if you move just 10 kilometers it will take around one and a half to uh, you know 2 hours for that i made sure that i raised the issue in parliament cmrl phase 1 was the cmrl phase 2 covering the entire omr stretch was there i was able to get funds from nodal agency uh, from funding agencies but dmk mp when she came back when she, when she came in 2019 in the central government didn't release a share of funds of around 4500 crores a member of parliament should speak about it in parliament she didn't speak about it at all she didn't raise the issue she didn't meet the urban development minister this is an entire urban area she didn't meet the urban development minister even once during a five year tenure she didn't bring anything for the smart city mission or amrut mission zero rupees was got from uh, for uh, smart city mission as such so the entire cmrl stretch what happened is that because central government really didn't release a share of funds what had happened is that they had reduced the entire length of the uh, uh, cmrl project and also five stations have been taken off so pallikarne marshland she didn't do anything we only uh, the 1200 crores of solid waste management where pallikarne marshland is where perumudi dump is located i was the one who took the initiative and then 1200 crores was allocated <coughs> when we initially planned within a period of 4 years the entire uh, dump yard should be uh, you know cleared off the garbage should be cleared off and pallikane marshland should be restored she came in 2019 she didn't take any concrete steps in this regard only 30% of the garbage has been removed and hence all if you see pallikane marshland uh, from the south perumbakkam water is coming from the west from uh, you know from uh, koyilambakkam from nanmam uh, nanmagalam and the adjoining villages around 20 village water is coming you know during the monsoon season from the north valley water is coming it all comes to pallikane marshland when the pallikane marshland is having uh, dump yard as such Uh, naturally what will happen is that the entire surrounding will be flooded she didn't <coughs> take care of solid waste management and also flood management asset she didn't even bother about the constituency that is why whenever she is going around she is uh, she is facing a lot of anger where people are very angry at her they uh, they will they are asking her you came after you came you know 5 years before now you are coming now and asking votes so that is why you know we we, we can it is clearly seen in the media also people are continuously raising their uh, you know voices against her don't come into our area that is a, that is the entire situation that is prevailing around. we ask him about how he plans on dealing with the flood crisis and he gives us a detailed breakdown of the possible solutions what your answer is to that entire problem of the monsoons every single time on omr places like sholinganallur completely flooded what do we do about that see in 2015 as such uh, when uh, south chennai faced a, a lot of problems regarding flooding because there was extreme downpour and purachi talema was the uh, cm during that time so she uh, wanted to make sure that there isn't a situation like this which should arise 
in the future. So she is a visionary leader. She wanted to make sure that funds are, you know, got from the central government. So I, as a member of parliament, because my South China was severely affected because of it, I took, uh, you know, I met Rajnath Singh sir during the time. I made sure that, you know, funds were got through SDRF, India funds. So through Smart City Mission, several under the number la, we got a lot of funds, around 6,500 crores of funds. So Purachi Talayama created a plan where it's short term, medium term and long term plans. Short term plans are where in which an area which is there, which you know for a normal rain will get inundated and then if you have to clear water there is no other way, around 15 to 20 days it will take. So that is all priority area, people will suffer. So that has to be reduced. So Purachi Talayama wanted to make sure that these are all short term measures in which we can address. So that area was around 700 we found out. And then the, within the next year, 75% of the places should be made sure that they don't get inundated. Mm -hmm. So that is short term measure. Medium term measures are building, for example, if you see, go and see in Koilambakkam, where around 20 villages in Ranmangalam and adjoining district, adjoining places, villages, where water is coming to the Pallikarne Mashtan, you need a large cut and cover drain. That needs to be built in around one and a half years. That, that immediately addresses so much problems. So that, uh, that was constructed within one and a half years. So within my tenure, that is all medium term measures. Like, in the same way, it holds good for several areas where we created a mid-term plan, mid-term plan. Long term measures is that you build drain water storm drains and then through which Adyar Basin, Kovalam Basin, M1, M2 and then 4,500 crores was allocated for it and then before also around 300-400 crores were allocated and then we are subsequently progressing it at a rapid pace. What had happened is that 2021 DMK government came into power. They said they are continuing, you know what happened is that 4,500 crores of contract they said uh, uh, what happened when the change of government took place? It was handed over to them. They are the ones who are going to implement it as such. Funding is the biggest problem for any project. We got the funding. What had happened is that 2023, before MIGJAM, they said that 95% of the work with regards to rainwater storm drain, around 4,500 crores, was completed. After, you know, the floods happened and the mismanagement, people came to know about it, they said 35% of the work only has been completed. This is what they had said. Have you ever seen a government lying to the people blatantly? This is what is the government. So people are extremely angry at it. So what I will do as a member of parliament is that make sure that the rainwater storm drains are, uh, you know, constructed in a scientific manner. You should just not construct rainwater storm drains. You should construct it in a scientific manner so that the rainwater gets uh, drained. And other thing is that when every water goes to Pallikarne Master and such, the Perigudi dump yard, only 30% of the garbage has been removed. 100% should be removed within a span of one and a half years. That is my promise to the people. So when it gets removed and then when once again it is converted into a marshland, the entire water when it comes there, it doesn't cause backwater effect. And hence these areas will be protected. So this is the vision in which you have to approach it. This is the best possible way in which you can approach and make sure that, that uh, these places don't suffer any flood. Our next stop is in the other end of the city to OMR or Old Mahabalipuram Road to catch Tamarisai Soundarajan's campaign. With lotuses literally blooming at her campaign venue and scores of women lined up, Tamarisai makes her way to a temple. How confident are you of winning in Chennai South? I am very confident. Who do you consider as your main competitor, DMK or AIDM? Both. Both. What is your plan for Chennai South? How do you plan or what do you plan on bringing for them? I have a lot of plans and I want to solve the problems. As, and we have to make some concrete steps to development of this South Chennai. The biggest issue here is flooding every time. So what are you going to do to address that? I have a great plan for to control the flood. Do you believe this huge anti-incumbency here against the sitting MP? Yes. And what? It does not approach the people at all. So oh. it's not with people. How has your connect been with the people of Chennai South? Because, you know, it came as a bit of a surprise when the ticket list came out and your name was mentioned. Uh, to get connected with people only, I resigned my job. I'm always a people's person. So you're confident you'll win Chennai South? hundred percent. What is the base on which the BJP is building in Chennai? Because it is considered a DMK nod. No, it is now not DMK nod. It is now BJP nod. Chennai is BJP nod? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Chennai South, Chennai Central, both will come your way? Yeah. All three, all three. All three. So you've heard from the two challengers. Let's now get you the incumbent MP. Amid the opposition's constant charge of ignoring her constituents, Tamarachi dismisses all the allegations. You're looking lovely as always. How's the campaign going? That's a lovely compliment which peps me up after, uh, you know, like in the course of a very hectic campaign. Campaign is um, going on on a very, very energetic, positive uh, way. 
because uh, the way people receive us uh, because of the social welfare schemes by the chief minister talapathy mk stalin is astounding they are all welcoming us with huge warm smiles hugs and then cheers garlands and what not and we've been seeing a sense of that while we were covering your rally here as well we've spoken to the aia dmk we've spoken to the bjp candidates ma'am they're saying that there's a huge sense of anti incumbency on the ground against you what's your response to that that is the usual cliched expression of any opposition candidates normally they would say like that only but you can see the reception of the people now where is the uh why do we have anti incumbency because this 3 years davidian model government has provided all the welfare schemes especially for women our cm has announced this um uh, monthly 1000 rupees which we which is named after our veteran leader kalinger magalir urimai thogai thittam 1000 rupees as well there is lots of buses which is freely run for all the women that's the second most important vidyal payanam thing and the third important is for the education of both girls as well as the boys from 6 to 12 standard 1000 rupees is put on their bank account i can go on endlessly listing the past 3 years have been uh, taking up tamil nadu on the front level either in uh, i mean all in all the levels of economics education and health so where is the anti incumbency and my performance at the parliament has also been appreciated by my constituents so it's all going well this is a constituency that's very diverse like for example here where we are right. you know close to tinagar commercial hub right. it hub part of this yeah. you've got marshlands which are also part of your constituency is it challenging to represent such a diverse constituency challenges uh, actually do not um, uh, pose a very large threat or whatever it is it is always very interesting because uh, i basically come from a village i studied in a city and then i got settled here so i come from a place wherein we all have that mixed of village roots as well as urban population here it is the sholing and allur if you go lots of migrant worker workers will be there and this is a very elite um, area mm -hmm. and when you go to saidapet and valsaravakam it is also you know like marginalized people live so challenges are being meted out with all the welfare schemes and especially you can see lot of road infrastructure like uh, metro water work as well as the metro train work is being carried away by the state government see the second phase metro train project has been halted for a long time though it is a quasi union as well as the state government union government hasn't given the fund it is with the 38 crores that the state government has actually holding the the shouldering the whole thing so lot of um, uh, upcoming activities show that challenges are being meted out in a very very productive way by our chief minister uh, chennai south was one of the worst hit during the floods recently uh, the opposition said that you were missing in action as an mp what's your response to that then they should have kept themselves shut inside their homes closing their eyes and not even listening to what's happening outside I was not in the parliament for more than 2 weeks then where were I if not in the parliament and if not in the flats there is a, an, a saying in um, tamil poona kanna moodikita ulagame irundruchu abdin if a cat just closes its eyes it will think that the whole world is dark that's how it is we are all in the ground i have the um, um, mem member of the legislative assembly tina har mla right now with me mr jk i have the uh, secretary mr yelu malai i have the councillors i have the veteran dnk leader mamlam chandrashekar and i have the uh, shakti vel this place in charge all of us were in the ground and mind you this is a rain after 49 years and the government especially the chief minister with this entourage of ministers as well as the people's representative handled it very well was the certificate given by the union inspection team it was their certificate that it was handled well second day airport was cleared there was no death rate at all third day almost all the places were here except very badly hit velacheri or madipakam um who do you consider your main competitor the ai dmk or the bjp here ma'am see we never see uh, especially dmk won't or it will never uh, look either way or uh, this way or that way to uh, you know like to get diverted who's our opponent and how, how do we just face them we are just working towards on a larger uh, 
uh, target that is with how much larger margin can we win this time rather than the last time that is our only goal so i'm neither worried about either of them so what's your victory goal this time this time with a margin of 5 lakhs okay. june 4th we will contact you and we'll see if that comes through all the very best ah, ma'am to you all the best thank you Chennai South is going to see an interesting battle between the two Tamils and AIADMK's Jayawardhan. Let's see who the constituents pick on April 19th. A short break on that note, and on the other side on Election Express, we get you our Chennai Central report. India cools down in 10 seconds with Hexa inverter heavy duty air conditioner Higher more creation more possibilities Make sure it leaves by night Yes papa Is ka style hai to chitti Let's go to unleash the feast mm. 8:55 AM Moto G64 5G unleash the beast an unparalleled election coverage with the team that wins every election from unmatched on ground reporting to real time poll updates stay tuned to the maximum channel for the maximum coverage platinum partner signature finest silver elichi a premium product from dilbag Mankind Pharma serving life. Intelligence Mates art with the all new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Higher heavy duty air conditioners. Gold Partner. Dulux. Sir, sir. Sir, aap itni colorful ho. But how can colorful be powerful? Follow me. Dhoop ke pasine chhoot jayenge, lekin ye data rahega. Dulux Weather Shield Power Flex. इसका हर रंग लड़े धूप, धूल और बारिश से. It's colorful. It's powerful. Dulux, Dulux, Dulux. That's another British movie now. BJP and the Congress. Do or die battle. Elections. The heartbeat of the world's largest democracy. Covered by the political journalist with nearly four decades of experience. The man who understands the pulse of the nation. Join India's ultimate newsman. I will decode the complex political chess game that's at the heart of Indian democracy. Elections unlock with Rajdeep Sardesai. Maximum analysis on the Maximum Channel. CPM ne apne ghoshna patra mein. हमें लगता है उन्होंने ये कहा होगा क्योंकि ये देश शांति का संदेश देने वाला देश रहा है ये गांधी का देश है ये बुद्ध की धरती है तो हम तो शांति सद्भाव सद्भावना में विश्वास करते हैं देशवासी तो उनका कहने का मतलब दूसरा रहा होगा लेकिन प्रधानमंत्री जी ऐसे ही बातों पर जोर ज़्यादा देते हैं बनस्पत भुखमरी बेरोजगारी पढ़ाई दवाई शिक्षा स्वास्थ्य जो रोजमर्रे के जिंदगी के आम लोगों के काम आने वाले मुद्दे हैं उस पर बात ही नहीं करते Welcome and welcome to Chennai Central. For anyone who's in Chennai, you know the best way to travel is through an auto. Anna Pola ma, Anna Pola. Let's go, Pola. Chennai Central consists of some of the busiest parts of the city: Egmore, Harbour, Chepok, Towson Lights, Anna Nagar, and Vilivakam. This area. Is a DMK nadu. Even our auto Anna is a DMK backup. Unga vote yenga? Chennai ladana. Yar ko vote pordenga? 
Our first stop is the DMK campaign. Dayane Dimarun, who's seeking a fourth term as MP from Chennai Central. Roads are filled with the red and black banners, and a three hour wait for Marun is spent playing a game or two with the locals, watching children dance, and the usual dance of democracy in Chennai. Diana Dimarin finally arrives to a grand welcome. He was in no mood for a media interaction. On to the next candidate then. The BJP has fielded Vinod Selvam from Chennai Central and he's hoping to be a giant slayer. Things you'll see in an election campaign in Tamil Nadu. A whole, an elephant which looks as real as they get. There's a person who actually goes in and starts rocking it. So it looks super real. They've even put a flag on the trunk here. This is what you'll see in an election campaign only in Tamil Nadu. Jostling through the crowds, we finally reach Vinoj. Vinoj, how's it going? How's the campaign going? The kind of reception we are getting in Chennai over the last two weeks is something out of the textbook, is something phenomenal, something which we have never experienced before. The Modi magic, more like a Modi tsunami, has taken over the city, and ever since this road trip happened three days back, uh, there's a lot of uh, jubilant atmosphere, the mood is great and uh, all signs of positivity and victory are here for us to see. Uh, you know, at this point, with the fight against a person like Dayana De Marin, is there a challenge? Is there a challenge really in coming up against Dayana De Marin? Is it a long-term fight rather than the immediate election? See, a uh, lot of people talk about him being a giant in politics. I don't understand what is the... A uh, measuring stick for calling someone a giant. Uh, just because of the fact that he was born into the first family and his uncle happens to be the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, it doesn't make him a great leader. A great leader is one who has served the people. How many times has he gone to the parliament and spoken for the people of central Chennai over the last 15 years? What has he actually brought to these people? Has the life of these people changed in the last 30 years of him and his family being MPs here? No. So I don't see him as a threat. I don't see him as a competition. He's very naive politically and we are willing to give him the toughest fight he's ever seen in his political career. Are you banking on a sizable North Indian population here in Chennai Central to actually beat a Dayanati Maran? I'm banking on the people of Chennai. We don't see people of Chennai as North Indian, South Indian. We don't, we don't belong to the DMK. We see everyone, every voter as Indians and we are very sure that uh, the people of Chennai are with us. They want to watch and they want to vote for development and not divisive politics in the coming up elections. What is your promise to the people of Chennai Central? If voted to power, what is the kind of achievements or what are the issues that you want to take up? Every year, every year we are used to the worst of floods and it's just worsening year by year. And substantial funds are being given by the Narendra Modi government. It just needs to be utilized properly, put to good use so that the people of Chennai don't suffer year after year without food and milk for seven days, submerging themselves in water. So better infrastructure, better education and Chennai is now becoming a drug capital of the country. So synthetic drugs is taking over the city and especially the youngsters. Get rid of all that, make sure that the students and the youngsters have a good life, better life and uh, throw a lot of light on the importance of sports and develop world-class sports facilities, bring an IAM to this part of the country and also make sure that Chennai is back on the map as one of the India's most premier cities. Interrupted by the chaos, we resume our conversation on board the campaign vehicle. On an issue like Kuam Vinoj, which has been here for decades, what's the solution you will offer to the people? Solutions are always around the corner. It's just that none of the parliamentarians have actually applied their mind to bring about a solution to the existing problem for uh, years now. Uh, the Kuam was once a source of life for the people of Chennai. It was river being utilized. But today it is just completely gone as a dump, as an absolute waste because of the mismanagement of the Ravidian parties. So it needs a proper team to be engaged, good minds to be put in place to make sure that we are able to uh, 
make this navigable again and people are able to use this again. What's been the response to the Prime Minister coming here? You know, how does it make a difference when a Narendra Modi comes and campaigns for you on the ground? Sensational. Sensational is the one word which you're going to use. Uh, there was a lot of emotion this time when the Prime Minister visited Chennai. It was not the party cadres who lined up. It was the general public who lined up in huge numbers. In huge numbers. It was the general public who came in. It was public who wanted to come and get a glimpse of the Prime Minister up close. And uh, these were absolutely emotional scenes for each one of us who were able to accompany him on the, on the vehicle. Okay, my final question to you. Are you going to be the giant slayer this election in a hub of Dainidhi Stalin and Dayanidhi Maran? Do you think you can beat the DMK? See, the Prime Minister's dream and message has been to put an end to the dynastic politics which has been ruling the country for uh, years. And this particular seat is an epitome of dynastic politics with Udayani Stalin being an MLA and Diana Nimar of the same family being the MP. So by putting an end to uh, the MP here, we'll be able to find a uh, uh, really good uh, uh, tribute to the Prime Minister's dream of putting an end to the dynastic politics which has been talking about. Okay, all the very best to you. The BJP is counting on a sizable North Indian population to create an upset for Maran. So we also caught up with some Chennaiites who hail from the north. How happy are you with Dayanadi Maran's performance? Uh, honestly, to be uh, in the last few months, I think uh, we've not seen any great change or great initiative by the MP or by the party itself. Because one main being the rains in the month of December, I think uh, that one, one and a half weeks, I think we suffered the most in terms of electricity, in terms of, uh, you know, accessibility to food and, you know, uh, pumping out water from the houses. It is very, very difficult. Uh, for me personally, as uh, my mom's house was flooded up to the ground floor and uh, she had literally, I mean, I couldn't even take a vehicle and bring her out of the house. So it was so bad. I, I don't think uh, this would, that affected me a lot. So I was not happy that I'm going to pick somebody who's not going to be responsible enough and come and look at us even though after the rains and anything in the last five years. So I think my... So uh, uh, just uh, at that point, you know, during the floods and all that happened because there were a lot of pictures that came in from Chennai as well. Was there help that reached you from your MP? Did he at any point, did you see him out there actively reaching out? Uh, no, there was nobody on the roads. There was absolutely nobody on the road. We were literally calling up our neighbors, checking on them. We were literally calling up on everybody who can help each other in terms of food, 